Well, we have stories about flying motorbikes, about virgin births of birds, uh, leaky toilets in space. It's all very strange and sciencey. Strange science. It's alive. It's like weird science, but strange. So just to circle back on that California condor story. Looks like for decades, scientists have been trying to coax the California condor back from the edge of extinction. The entire population of these birds crashed to just 22 animals in 1982. But by 2019, excuse me, captive breeding and release efforts had slowly built the total population up over 500. It turns out that female California condors don't need males to make babies. Go on. Sharks, rays, lizards, all on the list of creatures that can reproduce without mating. Um, I'm, I still feel like you're leaving something out and I can't quite tell what. I just had to sign into the National Geographic oh. website because it made me stop reading it. <laughs> and of course you have the sign in. Um, it because looks, I'm curious as to how the scientists took a look at the genetic data. Mm-hmm. They discovered that two male birds showed no genetic contribution from the birds that should have been their fathers. Uh, again, in other make... words, the birds came into the world by Bombo, fossil... bombogenesis. Fossil... <laughs> yes. Yes, virgin birth, it's called, according to a peer-reviewed paper in the October Journal of Heredity. Such a sexual reproduction in normally sexually reproducing species occurs when certain cells produced with a female animal's egg behave like sperm and fuse with the egg. So the condors evolved oh. to, to fertilize itself because there were so few of them. That the eggs started turning into sperm to fertilize the eggs. Boom. With, but without that, without the clapping. Without that. That is a big bird. This occurs in sharks, rays, and lizards. Scientists have recorded self-fertilization in some captive bird species like turkeys and chickens and in the Chinese painted quail. I have never heard of it outside of... I think you said sharks and rays. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of it outside of that. It's a survival tool where women will evolve to create sperm women. when we don't need you. Women birds? Yeah. Women I birds. wonder how long it'll take for humans. Not long. Have you seen to work some, up of the some sperm? people walking around this place? Have you seen them? Half of them don't wear socks. Even Jacob's not even wearing hard pants today. Lay off of Jacob. I'm just saying it. He's going to make tons of babies. Hey, day. hey, it was shorts day. Today. I didn't know that. Oh, I forgot to send out the memo. Is Tony wearing shorts? No. No. no one's not. See? <laughs> hey, See? you know what? It's been hot lately. Yeah, it's lately. Been really hot today. Yeah, it's cold in the morning, and then yeah. at like two or three, you're sweating. Mm-hmm. You're sweating in a 74 degree office. He has a real <laughs> problem with men in shorts. I don't know what it is. And no, I, I don't. I, it's it. fine. Or Adam down the hall. I just uh, want y'all to there will be, be able to reproduce at some point you in your life. There will be a time when I sweat and get hot. Yeah. Uh, parasitic chicks and other birds' nests exercise when they're still in the egg, part of their attempts to murder their foster siblings. This mm. is a, also That's a strange very story. Dark. Researchers in London found that chicks of parasitic bird species will move more in the egg than other species because they're building up, they're working out. They're literally building up strength to overcome other rival chicks once they've been born. Boom. Certain species of bird, most famously the cuckoo, will trick other bird species into raising their chicks for them, a behavior that's called uh, brood parasitism. Mm-hmm. And when the nest is unattended for a brief moment, the parasitic mother, the cuckoo, will drop her egg into the host nest and then quickly fly off before she's even seen. Hey, surprise, you got an extra egg in there. Boom. The unsuspecting adult host will end up raising the parasite chick for them even when that chick ends up killing its foster sibling rivals. Some species of birds, these brood parasites, will lay their eggs 
Uh, these other species, the hosts, ends up raising the foreign chicks at the expense of their own chick. That's I got a, this new uh, birding app where and? I take a picture of a bird yeah. and I um, post it on the app and it tells me what kind of bird it is. What kind of bird is this? That's a booby. Ah. No, I said, what kind of bird is this? I think that might be actually the bush tit. I'm sorry? They're very popular in the Western United States. I, I love them. I think they're great. I can't. They're like, they're like, <laughs> can't say it. Uh, it's one <laughs> step too far. All right. Coming up next. <laughs> Leaky toilets in space. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and we were making fun of that show, huh? <laughs> yeah, we yeah, were. Okay. Oh, what a horrible yeah, show. That idiots. <laughs> Gary and Shannon will continue. <laughs> Poor Layla. Gary and Shannon, KFI AM 640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. John and Ken show is uh, just around the corner, but we're in the middle of strange science. Some of these uh, bizarre stories that happen in the science world that we feel like we should bring to you. For example, there is a hardened wood knife scientists have discovered, they said, is about three times sharper than a stainless steel dinner knife. According to Tang Lee, a material scientist at the University of Maryland, first author on a paper, said that this wooden knife can be used and reused many times. Do you ever hear about the knives made from frozen human feces? I have not, although I am interested. They don't cut through meat very well, turns out. Uh, typically, what contains only about 50% cellulose, which does provide some structural integrity, and weaker molecules make up the rest. This two-step process put together by Tang Li was able to remove the weaker components but retain the cellulose. So coating the wood in mineral oil helps protect the sharpness during use and washing. They used this uh, wooden knife to determine why it was retaining so much strength and discovered this two-step process. The use prevented defects from creeping in. So maybe knives of the future won't be ceramic or metal. They'll just be wooden. SpaceX is taking on its toilet troubles in, before it launches more astronauts into space. You think, uh, well, I guess it would have been a different company. I was going to say, do you think William Shatner blew up the toilet on uh, Blue Origin? Well, that That's- may have been the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. The company and NASA want to make sure the toilet leaks will not compromise the capsule launching early on Sunday from Kennedy Space Center or another one that has been parked at the ISS since April. Apparently, there was urine spilled onto oh, fans and beneath is... the floor. Oh, A tube came unglued. Now, the, I would imagine that the problem with this is that a floater here on Earth means something very different than a floater in space. Everything is a floater in space. And uh, if you get a uh, you get a pipe that comes undone, everything is floating around the cabin. It would seem like it was one of those things where they would check it and double check it and triple check it to make sure that thing didn't leak. Uh, Could you imagine you're just at work and all of a sudden Jacob's pee kind of floats onto you? I'm I'm sorry, floats onto me. Yeah. No, I can't imagine that. <laughs> uh, they said any structural damage could potentially endanger astronauts as they fly back to earth next month so they're going to complete their tests engineers will present new data on the capsule's toilet system and other aspects of the mission to management during a review on friday and listen every space capsule mission since the 50s has had to deal with that what do you do with what is this you know human bag of liquid and bone Mm. that, that we deal with all the time this this meat shoot that we've got so we've got to figure out what it is. <laughs> Sorry, we're not going to go. We're not going to go much further than meat shoot without pulling the car over. Better, better word might be meat sheath. That way, because it's just it's contained in one vessel. It's all we're all. It's just we're just a bag of beef, you know. <laughs> and we produce a lot of weird liquids and stuff that come out of our body. There comes a time in a <laughs> in a meat sheath <laughs> life where life. well. You, you, <laughs> as a scientist, like imagine if you worked for the precursor of NASA in your late fifties, early sixties, and they're like, okay, so Bob and Cheryl and Tim 
and John, you guys are going to work on the rocket. And then Stephen and James and uh, Biff, you guys are going to work on reentry. Clarence and Jimbo, you guys are going to work on the toilet system mm-hmm. in, the, in the rocket. Whether it's a catheter or a bucket or something. You guys are scientists. You work it out. And they're like, wait a minute. I wanted to work on the rocket part. And they're like, yeah, but we also still need a toilet of some kind. Yeah. They just phone it in? Well, no, I'm not saying they phone it in, but that's got to be a little bit disheartening. You sign up to be exploring the heavens, and they're like, yeah, but you also have number two duty you have to think of. Jacob, let's make a note of it. When we get sausages for lunch, Gary comes up with words like meat sheath, and I think they're they're related. Yeah, no more meat. No more meats for you. You're just thinking about that, that sausage casing you put down your maw. It was good. I know. But then you come up with things like meat sheath. It had mustard on it. We are not closer to hoverboards, but we are closer to a flying motorbike that can cruise at speeds of 60 miles per hour. Apparently, it's going to go on sale next year for just $682,000. Uh, it's out of Tokyo. How much? 682000 Yeah, sure. Why not? I guess there are cars that are that expensive. True. Um, I've been inundated with ads for those new, those one wheel, I guess you'd call them skateboards. The one big wheel in the middle of it. And you put one foot on either side of it and roll oh, it around. Okay. Inundated. I'm getting those all the I time. Why. I don't know. Do I look like the kind of guy who's going to one wheel my way to work every day? No. Well. No. I don't know what you guys say in the office that my computer listens to, but. 